amen. Well, we've been dealing and we've been talking about faith and we're going to do a quick review and then we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. Our, our workable definition is faith is the supernatural power of God made available through man whereby man can transform conditions circumstances and situations in the natural realm over which he has been given authority over based on the express will of God. And so you have been given authority, but if you have to dive into the word of God so you can understand the will of God. Faith is us exercising that authority. Uh, we always like to say grace is what God makes available. Faith is what takes it. And so, and so God has already done his part and made it available to you, but we just have to begin to operate and use our faith. And faith is not automatic. Faith does not automatically come. You have to be taught the word of God. The Bible says, Romans 10, 70, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so we also talked about that the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Several times it says that. Says that. So it's, it's, it makes it an important thing. It makes it vital that we understand because we have a relationship with Jesus Christ. We are commanded to live by faith. Not only that, faith is how the Father functions. And we're going to dive into this a little bit more today, but faith is how the Father functions. When, because we desire to be like God because He is our Heavenly Father, there's nothing wrong with you desiring to operate as God operates. Matter of fact, you should desire to operate how God operates. And so we have to understand because he is our father we want to function we want to operate we want to move we want to think and act just like him and that's why he's given us the word of God because he wants us to understand how he thinks he wants us to understand how he how he moves and operates and so he wants us to operate the same way and not only that Faith is how we please God. Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. And so we must understand if we're going to please God, we must do it by faith. It is important that faith, we operate in faith that we move because that's how we please him. Then we talked about faith is necessary to overcome the challenges of life. Faith is necessary to overcome the challenges of life. And so if we're going to be overcomers for whatsoever is born of God, overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. And so if we're going to overcome, because the truth of the matter is God never promises us that everything will be perfect. We're going to have to go through some things. We're going to have to experience some trial. It's the word of God, Psalms 34, 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. And so it's important that we understand we're going to go through some things, but we don't have to be defeated by them things. We don't have to allow them things to run our lives. Why? Because we're trusting God. We're believing God. And then we talked about the universal principle is all the promises of God are received by faith. If we're going to receive the promises of God, if you see a promise of God, promise of God in the word of God, and you're standing on it, the only way you're going to receive it is by faith faith. And so that's important for us to understand. And so this is making uh, uh, faith a very, very important thing. And so we've went through the ABCs of faith. We went through the asking and we let, let you know that, hey, it's important. God um, put it in your covenant right that you have a right to ask him for even material things. He says, ask and it shall be given. He says, seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open unto you. So he's letting us know. And we gave example, Jabez asked, oh Lord, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. And the end said, God gave him what he requested. And so if God didn't want us to ask for things, he wouldn't have gave it to him. Uh, we even see uh, when James and, and John, the brothers of Zebedee came and said, Jesus, we want, want to ask you, we want to ask you for whatever we want and we want you to give it to us. And he was always said, okay, what you want? 
He didn't shun them. He didn't say, hey, you shouldn't be asking me for stuff. No, he was open to their request. Now, he couldn't do what they wanted him to do because it was out of bounds, but he was open to their request. Just like because he's our heavenly father, he's open to our request. So we talked about the acts, and then last week we talked about believing, and we gave the de biblical definition. The biblical believing is the spiritual capacity to accept as a fact that for which I have no sense realm evidence. That means I can't see it around me, but I'm still believing it because the word of God says so. And this is important. In order for us to be able to believe, we have to understand that we cannot look at what we see. What we see takes no belief. And, and we begin to talk about how believing is controlled by your will. It's controlled by your will. It's not con your believing is not controlled by anyone else's will. It's controlled by your will. And then we even talked about believing has an established criteria that is individually set. And we saw this in the example of Thomas, where Thomas says, hey, I'm not going to believe the disciples told him, hey, Jesus has resurrected. We've seen him. He said, oh, no, I'm not going to believe that. Unless I put, unless I see Jesus, unless I, unless I put my hands in, in his, in his, in his, in his, in his wounds, unless I put my fingers in. And then when Jesus shows up and he sees him, he changes his own criteria. He says, Oh Lord, my God. And he starts shouting. He didn't even, in, even need to touch Jesus. Why? Because he controlled his will. He controlled what he believed just like you do. You control it. And so what happened is Jesus, uh, believe, our believing criteria for the saints is set by Jesus. Jesus said unto Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed me. But blessed are they that have not seen me, yet they believe. And so Jesus said, I can't let you stay here, Thomas, because there are going to be people who are going to come after you who don't, who can't see me in the natural. And so they're going to have to believe without seeing. And so blessed are they that, that have not seen me, but yet believe. And so he switches this criteria that makes us understand. So we also talked about that. Uh, how do I impact my belief system? How do I impact my belief system? And then we begin to talk about meditation. We begin to talk about how meditation is an internal commercial on the canvas of my imagination where I can have an imagined experience which will strongly impact what I believe. Well, then we talked about through meditation, you get verbalization, you say it. Visualization, seeing it on the inside. Internalization, setting your affections up on it. And then repetition, doing it on a regular basis. And so these are what we do. We use meditation to see the end result, to see what the word of God has promised us and we're meditating on. And then we're allowing ourselves uh, to see ourselves possessing the new house. We allow ourselves to see ourselves possessing uh, the new car, the possessing our family getting saved possessing our healing and then we allow ourselves to, to feel it we allow ourselves to how would you feel when you get that promotion when you get that healing when you get that promotion how would you feel and you allow yourself to be in the moment and experience and that's how meditation increases us we even see this in psalms 1 uh, 2 and 3 but his delight is in the law of the lord and in his law does he meditate day and night and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he do it shall prosper. And so that's where we ended off. And so today, uh, a part of the ABCs of faith, we got our asking, we got our believing. And now today we're going to deal with confession. Confession is so, so important. Let's go to uh, Mark 11, 22 through 24. King James says this. And Jesus answering and said unto him, have faith in God, have faith in God. Other verses say, have the God kind of faith. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which, say, which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. <laughs> oh my God, this is important. So, so this is why 
And when you say something out of a believing heart, when you say something out of the be believing heart, oh, you're going to have what you say. He's good. He says the word of God lets us know. And in Mark 11, 22 through 20, what makes this more powerful? It says Jesus speaking. This is Jesus literally talking to his people. He's letting you know that when you have the God kind of faith and you say something out of a believing heart, it's going to manifest. It's going to come to pass. And so we have to be very careful. And so we've titled today what that mouth do because it's important that we understand what comes out of our mouth uh, uh, is vital is important what are you doing with your mouth what are you saying with your mouth but here in this flick and we're gonna we're gonna end it off with this we see uh martin lawrence and will smith uh they're chasing after the bad guy and they done been through all this and they've been shot at and all this and, and in the midst of this chase martin lawrence says you have the right to remain silent anything you say can and will be used against you in, in a court of law and so and so uh, will says what are you doing he says i'm getting it out the way so i want you to keep that He's confessing something. And so what we have to understand, confession is important. It is vital. God, what is it? here's the key. God speaks and the Father forever functions by faith. God believes what he says and that and that and what he is speaking it's coming to pass. Matter of fact, God believes it has already come to pass because he has spoken. Since he believes what he speaks, God has an expectation that what he says will manifest in the natural. Oh, you you got to catch this because God is our example. And so we got to see how God operates in this in this thing. And so our first point is this, what God speaks must come to pass. What God speaks must come to Hebrews 11 and 3 says, by faith we understand that the world during the successive ages were framed, fashioned put in order and equipped for their intended purpose by the word of God. So that what we see was not made out of things which were invisible. And so what I want you to understand is that everything was created by the word of God. Everything that was created was created by the word of God. And if we go back to Genesis 1, we can see it. We say, what is it? Genesis 1 and 3, God said Genesis 1 and 4, God saw. 1 and 6, God said. 1 and 7, it was so. Genesis 1 and 9, God said. Genesis 1 2, God saw that it was good. 1 11, God said. 1 11, and it was so. And God said, and it was so. And God said, God saw that it was good, and it was so. And so this is so, so important that we understand this. When God stepped out into the darkness, he didn't get afraid. He was like, oh my goodness, it's dark. Oh my goodness. He began to speak his world into the existence. He began to speak this world into existence. And so here's the thing we got to pull from that. Since God used his words to create the world he wanted to create, then we have a right <laughs> to create our world with our words. And this is so important. And as we go through this, I want you to understand this. Now, here's one scripture I got to jump. I got to say, because this impacted me so much. Psalms 33, 7 through 9, my ghetto version, the passion uh, translation says this. His voice scooped out the seas. Oh, my goodness. His voice scooped out the seas. The ocean depths he poured into vast reservoirs. Now, with breathtaking wonders, let everyone worship Yahweh, this awe-inspiring creator. Words he breathed. Catch this. Words he breathed and worlds were, were birthed. <laughs> Words he breathed and worlds were birthed. Let there be, and there it was, springing forth the moment he spoke. 
No sooner said than done. Oh my, this is the type of God you serve. Oh my, this is the type of God that you call your heavenly father. His voice scooped the seas. The ocean depths he poured into vast reservoir. This is why everyone should worship Yahweh, the awe-inspiring creator. Catch this, words he breathed and words, worlds were birthed. Oh my goodness. He breathed words and worlds were birthed. He says, springing forth the moment he spoke no sooner than done oh this is the type of power the god you serve possesses that when he speaks the moment he speaks it is done it is so and so what what has god spoken over your life what word has he spoken over your life so when he spoke it the moment he spoke it it was done it was so. We even in the life of Jesus, when Jesus spoke to the fig tree, he walked away because he had the confidence that it was done. It was so. There was a man who came to Jesus and said, hey, I don't need you to come to my house to heal my service. Just send your word. Jesus sent his word and what he spoke, it was so. This is the type of God that you serve. This is who you're connected to. Oh my goodness. Listen, Isaiah 55, uh, 10 through 11 says, says this, and I want you to catch it says, for as the rain and snow come down from the heavens and return not there again, but water the earth and make it bring forth and sprout that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word, oh my goodness, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void without producing any effect and useless, but it shall accomplish that which I please and purpose and it shall prosper oh my god in the things for which i sent it to prosper god says when i say something baby you can guarantee it won't come back to me void and so we serve a god that when he declares and he speaks it is so Oh my goodness, you should give a hand clap. You should give a thank you, Jesus. You should give, you should be worshiping God because when God declares, there is so much power in the word of God that when God speaks, he puts all of his power behind it so it can manifest. Oh my God, oh, hallelujah. So when God declares something in your life, he doesn't just declare it, but he puts his power behind it. He puts his reputation behind it. It. He puts all that he is behind it because he got a confidence that it is already done. And that's the type of confidence you got to have in your God. That's the type of confidence you got to have in your father that when he declares it, it is is so i'm standing on it can you see it in the natural no but god said it do you still feel the pain yeah, uh, no, i'm healed because god said it are you still in debt i'm not looking at what i see now watch this we're not ignoring what we see we know we we sick and we're a little sick because that's why we're going to the doctor but we're choosing by an act of our will to say what god says to speak what god says i know what my current situation is and that's what it is right now but i understand that i'm grabbing the word of god and i'm meditating on that thing and i'm saturating in that thing and i'm going to speak and declare what comes forth out of the word of god why because i'm I'm not coming into agreement with my situation. Mm, that's good. When you speak the word of God and you come into agreement with God, you're saying, God, I trust you over my situations, over my circumstances, over my conditions. And so you're changing your thinking and you're standing on something greater than yourself and your circumstances. Oh my goodness. So, so this is how God functions. Do, do we understand that? Does everyone understand that when God speaks, he has the confidence it is so, it is done. I, he does doesn't care how impossible it seems to people it is so 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 we got that yeah 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 understand that i want to make sure that's clear give, give me in the thing says we 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 understand that give me give me some nods and, and all that so we can understand because as we move forward i want you to that's always going to be the foundation that we walk in is that when god speaks it is done if god speaks healing it is done. If God speaks prosperity, it is done. If God speaks salvation, 
it is done. If God speaks joy, it is done. If God speaks peace, it is done. And so we have to understand that. So let's go ahead and jump into Genesis 1, just because I got to connect this to you. Because right now, you're like, okay, I can receive that because that's God. And he's God all by himself. And, and God, God can do anything. So does this connect to you? How important, how does it connect to you? Genesis 1, 26 says, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. And so, and so here we are, God is talking to the Holy Spirit and Jesus and, 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 and the Christ. He said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. So you have been created in the image of and that word can be used as the reflection of God. You, you, once you come into relationship with Jesus Christ, you are the image and the reflection of God. Oh my goodness. The, if you ever look at your reflection, your reflection can only do what you do. <laughs> your reflection, you lift up your hand, your reflection does it. You lift up your other hand, your reflection. You nod your head, your reflection. So your reflection operates as you operate. And so what God is saying is we are going to make man to operate and to function as we function, they are our, our image. They are in our likeness. This, this is so. This is so important. This is so important. And so we jump to Genesis two nineteen, and it says, "Out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field, every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam, and said to what and, and Adam to see what he would call them." And whatsoever Adam called them, called every living creature, that was the that was the name thereof. Now here it is. God says, "Let us create man in our image and our likeness. Let him be our reflection." Then Genesis two nineteen says, "Hey, out of the ground the Lord formed every beast of the field and every fowl of there and brought them unto Adam." So God has created Adam. He's created him. He breathed into him the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And so now God is is showing Adam something. He brings every animal before him. And he says, Adam, whatever you name them, it is so. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my, catch this. He's saying, Adam, whatever you call them, it is so. Now let's go back. When God spoke to, to the stars and told them to hang, they're still hanging there, there this day. When God told the sun, sun, stay up there and shine and, and, and rotate, it is still doing that today. When God told the galaxy, and why, I, 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 scientists are even saying that the galaxy is even bigger than what we think and that it's even expanding even right now. So it is still doing what God told it to do from Genesis 1. <laughs> oh my goodness. So God tells Adam, Adam, whatever you call these animals, it is going to be. And whatever he called them, it is still the same thing today. Oh my goodness. Why? Because God is showing Adam the same way I function, son. I want you to function the same way. You are created in my image and my likeness. You are my reflection. So you move and operate as your heavenly father moves. If you speak it, it is so. If you declare it, it is so. Oh my goodness. And, and watch this. And so, and so Adam is catching on. And 20 says, and Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was no one found a help me for him. And so here it is. Adam is operating like God. He said, oh my goodness. So not only did Adam name them, but literally what he spoke into them gave them their identity. <laughs> oh my goodness. You didn't see uh, a, a fish trying to be a land animal. You didn't see a land animal trying to be a fish. You didn't see a bird trying to be a fish. They understood their identity by what 
Adam spoke into them. What Adam said, there was enough power in what Adam said to literally give them their identity. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I hope you are catching these gems. What you speak in your world has the ability to literally give its identity and its name. Oh my goodness. We're going to dive into that. And so we see this. We see this. Adam ain't even done. Adam's working in this thing. He said, oh my goodness. So he got confident in this thing. Even to the point that when God gave him a wife. Watch this. Genesis 2, 23. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bone. God has created, put him to sleep. And he's created the woman. And this is the first time Adam is seeing her. He says, and Adam said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Now as he's operating so much because what God is working on him in that he begins, he sees her for the first time. And his first thought is to give her a compliment. This is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman he understands that he's operating just like God and so when he comes to something he can't live with it without naming it oh my goodness oh he can't live with it without speaking into it who it is and labeling it. He cannot live with it without communicating and literally confessing into it who it is. She received the identity that was spoken to her be through Adam because Adam had been spending time with God and he knew how God functioned. He began to function and to operate just like God. Oh my God. So here's the thing. Confessing faith Field words is vital to your success as a believer. Faith-filled words, confessing faith-filled words is important. So what are faith-filled words? What is confession? Confession is the word in the New Testament, which, which means homologia, which means to say the same thing as homo meaning the same thing logia meaning to say and so so it's literally saying confession is literally saying saying the same thing as and so what we want to build our case upon we want to say the same thing as the word says we want to come so much into agreement with god with our with our faith confessions that we are literally saying the same thing as the word of God. So, so when you go to the doctor and because you got that pain and the doctor says you have cancer, you don't fall apart. Why? Because your confession is by his stripes, I am healed. If the doctor tells you got thyroid issues, you you don't break down and start falling apart. You start confessing by his stripes, you are healed. Why? Because you are confessing, you're making a faith confession. You're saying the same thing as, and it's because God, when he speaks his word, he puts his power behind it. And so therefore, when you're saying the same thing as, the power of God moves into your life to move and to operate. And so, so we have to begin to understand when we confess, and when we confess faith-filled words, what happens? What, what is going on? Because when we confess faith-filled words, it's more than words just verberating through the air. We're not just saying things and just to be saying things. And so we have to be careful. John 6, 63 says this. It is the spirit that quickened. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And so here Jesus is talking. He says, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Oh my goodness. So when we speak and we're confessing the word of God, when we speak, we are literally speaking a spirit. <laughs> oh my goodness. With the words that we speak, they are spirit. And that's why they can manifest. That's why they can impact people on such a great degree. Because when we speak, because we are spirit speak, we are spirit speaking beings ourselves. Because let's go back to this. Because First Thessalonians 5 and 3, spirits, bless them, uh, spirit, soul, and body. I am a spirit. 
I possess a soul and I live in a body. You got to get that because you are a spirit. When you speak, you are literally speaking words that are spirit filled. And so you have to be very careful because so many people are losing their uh, 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 prosperity, losing their blessings, losing their healing in their mouth. And they don't understand. That's why we title it what that mouth do, because what your mouth does is vital to your success. Because we you talk about Mark 11, 22, when you speak out of a believing heart, it's going to manifest. That works positive. That works negative. When you walk around talking about, oh my goodness, I'm always sick. Oh my goodness, uh, I, I, no one likes me. Uh, I, and you're saying all these things and you're right. You're manifested in your life. Why? Because what you say has powers. So when you speak, you're not just speaking words through the atmosphere. You're like Jesus. You're spirit. When you speak, they are spirit and they are life. Oh, this is so important. So you just don't speak normal words. So when you speak, also let's go. When you confess faith-filled words, the outcome of your life is at stake. Oh my goodness. When you confess faith-filled words, the outcome of your life is at stake. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit of the fruit thereof. So you have literally life and deaths before you. What are you speaking? You have healing and sickness before you. What are you speaking? You have prosperity and you have poverty before you. What are you speaking? And so this is so important because God says life and death is in the power of your tongue. Listen, he has literally transformed, transferred the, your, your life and your death into your hands. God is saying life is death. I don't have the authority. Oh my goodness. I don't have the authority because of how I set it up to take your life. That's in your hands. Oh my goodness. And God says I have the ability, but because I'm a God of order and I set up order, I don't have the authority. And it's not because I'm not sovereign. Because I chose to give you that power. I've given you, I've said life and death is in the power of your tongue. And so when we understand what words we're speaking, we have to be very careful of what we say. We have to, because we're, some of you are delaying your blessing. You're, you're delaying because you can't control this. Some of you just need to go, mm. When, when, when that debt come and you're speaking, I owe no man anything but to love him. And you want to speak debt. Mm, Pull up your mouth until you can get to Romans 13. Hey, I owe no man anything but to love him. You have to speak the word. The word is can change everything. Watch this. When you confess uh, faith-filled words, salvation is received. This is how we receive salvation. Romans 10, 9, 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in, in, in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So you even get saved. You got to say something to get saved. You can't get saved being silent. Oh my goodness. You cannot get saved being silent. The Bible says the mouth, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And so this is how we even get saved. And so we have to take uh, 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 what we do to get saved and apply it to everywhere else. Because that is the basis of our faith. We're asking, believing, and now we're confessing. And since we understand we can ask God for salvation, we believe it. And out of a believing heart, when we speak that God, we receive you into our life. Jesus, we receive everything you've done for us. We're now saved. It is done. It is so. And so we have to do that same thing, even with prosperity, even with healing, even with deliverance is making sure we control this. This is where you're losing it. You, you can ask God, you can believe God, but then if you don't control this, it cancels out everything. Uh, there was one time when I was believing uh, for uh, to be a senior pastor. 
and, and I was at Canaan and, and talking to people and someone said something about me being a senior pastor. I was like, oh no, oh no, oh no. And then my brother, Will Parker Jr. just walked up and said, you have what you say and turned around and walked off. He just turned around and walked off on your boy. And I said, but I got the message. I never, from that moment forward, I never spoke against what the word of God told me. God said, I, 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 he says, I'm a pastor uh, after God's own heart. That's what God told me. He said, I raised you up to be a pastor even before I walked in it. Even before we started a live church, God was already declaring that I was a pastor. But I couldn't speak against it because if I spoke against it, uh, uh, it, it would delay it or, or it would it would even stop it altogether if I kept speaking against it, because here's the revelation. Here's the revelation. Can I blow your mind? Here's the revelation. Your words, and I'm going to say this slow, your words have more power in your life than even God's word has in your life. When you speak something, what you speak has more power in your life than even the word of God. <laughs> Why? Be okay, here's a prime example. A person, the word of God says that God desires for all people to be saved, that none should perish. But if I keep saying, I ain't accepting Jesus Christ, <laughs> I ain't, I'm not going to be a believer. Which one's going to win? My confession for my life or the word of God? Now, my confession it was going to manifest in my life. But here's the great thing. It doesn't change what the word of God says. The word of God is still true. <laughs> that has, but I choose not to believe that truth and speak that truth so it doesn't manifest in my life. And so what we have to do is begin to come into agreement with the word. And once I come into agreement, I say, hey, I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. So no matter what people say, Jesus is in my life. I have a relationship. Why? Because I confessed him as my Lord and Savior. Because what I say has more power and authority in my life than even the word. And so I have to come into agreement with the word and then God's power backs what I say and it manifests in my life. And so watch this. Here's another thing. When you confess faith-filled words, it establishes a vital part of the exercise in the faith. Mark 11, 23, for verily I say unto you, that whoso say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, he, but he shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. He shall have whatsoever he saith. He shall have. So when you, you've you asked God, you, you, you're you confessing, you're talking to your problem. You're not talking about your problem. You're speaking to the mountain. Be thou removed and be thou cast in. And you, you're not doubting. You're in belief. And it shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Somebody type in a thing. I shall have whatsoever I say. I shall have whatsoever I say. I shall have whatsoever I say. Because this is so, so important. So here's the, here's the thing. What happens when you confess, confess what is the impact uh, when you confess a faithful words? Now, this is so important. This is what you need. When you, so we understand that when we speak, it's not just words verberating through the atmosphere. When we speak, we are speaking spirit and we are speaking life. We are literally, there are other things that happen. Here's, a, here's another thing. When you uh, faith filled words, dispatch your angels. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, oh, let me pause. When you come into agreement with the word of God, it dispatches, dispatches your angels. The reason why many of your angels are not working on your behalf is because you ain't giving them a word to, to, to work with. They don't move by your word. They move by the word of God. Watch it. Psalms 103 and 20 says, bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in, in strength that do his commandments, hearkening unto his voice of his word. Hebrews 1.14 says this, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? 
Oh, oh my, this is mind blowing. So you mean to tell me the word of God is telling me that the angels that excel in strength, that are strong because they only do the word of God. They only hearken unto the voice of his word. Now here's the, here's the key. This is important. It says they hearken unto the voice of his word. So this is why you have to speak the word of God because you give it voice. <laughs> oh my God. Think about this. When I say, I owe no man anything but the loving, I gave in the word, I've given the word a voice. And when I give the, the word the voice, the angels hear the word of God being spoken and they begin to move on their behalf, on, on our, my, our behalf. Think about this. Remember when Daniel was praying and he was praying and it felt like God wasn't showing up and, and the angel finally showed up and he, he told him, he said, when you first spoke, we was on our way. But we got into a battle with, with, the, uh, with the enemy and we had to call Michael and he had to come to uh, defeat the enemy. And then I came for y'all. I have come for thy word. Oh my goodness. God is telling us this. He's saying, I'm coming for your word. So the angels are like, give me a voice of the word so I can come for it. So because I'm strong in strength, I can make it happen on your behalf. I can speak to the right people on your behalf, but you got to give a voice to the word. To right now, take a break and start giving a voice to the word. If you're believing for debt freedom, I owe no man anything but to love him. If you're believing for healing, speak by his stripes, I am healed. Come on, come on. S declare the word. Speak it. If you're believing for joy, you say, God, in your word, you will give me joy. Joy of the Lord is my strength. You would, If you're believing for peace, God, your word says, peace that passeth all understanding, I receive it now, right now. Angels, I pray put you on assignment. The word says, oh, no man, anything but to love him. And so God, I'm putting your angels on the side because I'm giving a voice to your word. Oh, oh, let me calm down. Let me, let me settle down. Let me settle down. You have to give voice to his word. Oh, that is so powerful. And when you do, it dispatches your angels. Oh my goodness. So today, some of you, I believe, are going to start putting some faith-filled words out in the atmosphere. So therefore, you can start dispatching your angels. Not only does it dispatch angels, but faith-filled words restrains demonic forces. Oh my goodness. It restrains demonic forces. You trying to fight the devil on your own. When you when when the word is supposed to be your sword, when the word is supposed to be your weapon. This is why you got to be skilled in the word. This is the reason why you got to be skilled in the word. This is the reason why you got to be able to open up this book. Open up this book and literally go through it because some of you need to stop praying with your eyes closed. You need to grab this word and start opening it up and saying, God, this is what your word says. This is what I'm standing on. So I said, Matthew 4, this is Jesus uh, uh, being tempted by the devil. He has literally uh, experienced the power of God. He's been baptized. Uh, the, uh, God opened him. This is my beloved son who I will please. The, ain't, the uh, uh, dove descended, the Holy Ghost descended like a dove upon him and the enemy came to attack him after he fasted 40 days and 40 nights and every time the enemy brought something to him this is what he said in verse 4 he says but he answered and saying it is written man shall live not let man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God he answers him again seven Jesus said to him it is written again thou shall not tempt the Lord thy God in verse 10 he answered, then Jesus said unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt not, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shall thy worship. And so he put the enemy on flight by using the word of God. He put some of the demonic spirits, some of you need to go start going through your house and speaking the and putting a voice to the word of God and evicting the enemy out your house. You need to go in your children's room and speak the word. You need to go in your bedroom and speak the word. You need to go all throughout your house and just start speaking the word of God, giving a voice, giving the telling 
telling the angels, angels, show up to this house. You are the protection of this house. Can't no devil, can't no demon come into my house because I'm giving voice to the word. <laughs> and, and we understand that when God's word go out, it cannot go back to him uh, uh, void. It get, must accomplish what it's supposed to accomplish. It must do it. Even when you speak it. <laughs> even when you speak it. So I said, faith-filled words exercise the spiritual authority. And the disciples went out. Jesus sent the disciples out and they came back. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the de devils are subject unto us through thy name. Now here's the key. In order for them to hear the name, they had to speak it. <laughs> oh Lord. In order for the demons to hear the name of Jesus, there had to be words that came out of the 70s mouth that literally say, in the name of Jesus, we cast out healing. In the name of Jesus, we cast out devils. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> and they said, at your name, Jesus, Demons uh, had to obey. And so you got spiritual authority. And so you have a right as a covenant believer, as a child of the king, as one who's a, a student of the word to speak faith-filled words. Remember, we're confessing. We're, we're saying the same thing as we're just coming into an agreement with the word of God. And there is power in our agreement. There's deliverance in our agreement. And this is why, watch this. Faith feel words release the force of faith. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast in the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. When it's said, there's a power behind it. There is a force that it makes things happen. And so, so here, here since we understand we got to do a, a, a faith confession. And so I, I want to give you some. And when, when I learned this, I learned this uh, from, from Bishop Ivy Hillier, Apostle Ivy Hillier. And I want to share this with you, uh, of the formulation of, of the confession statement. And, and so you got to start making some faith confession some faith confessions over your life over every area of life finances relationships your professional career you know every area of life emotional spiritual life or whatever it is you have to be able to make faith confessions and you can write them down until you and confess them every day confess them every day so I, I got one psalms 35 twins god delights in the prosperity of his servant so therefore his servant i declare that i'm out of debt my needs are met I I have plenty more to put in store. I no longer operate by the world system of debt cancellation, but according to God's system of seed time and harvest. I believe that when I sow seed in the good ground, I reap an immediate hundredfold return. I have a hearing heart because I meditate on your word day and night. Psalms 4, 23 says, out of the heart flows the issues of life. So therefore, I refuse to allow anything to come before my eyes, my ears, and out of my mouth that does not line up with the word of God. As I continue to speak the word of God over my life, I expect uh, the increase Increase and prosperity. Angels, uh, according to Psalms 103 and 20, the word of God commands the angels of God to go forth now and bring in my prosperity and bring in salvation and bring in healing and bring in deliverance. According to Psalms 2 and 8, uh, you said you would give the heathen for our inheritance. So I call in unsaved people to a live church. According to Isaiah 43, 1 through 7, you said you would speak to the north, south, east, and west. You would say to the sons, you would call your sons from afar and your daughters from the ends of the earth. So I I call your sons and daughters from the ends of the earth to converge upon a live church. You know, that, that's part that's part of my confession. And I've said it for so long that I can roll it off and I can literally say it over and over and over again because it's not something you say one time. It's something you confess over and over and over again because you're reminding yourself. You're giving voice to the word. You're giving voice to the word. And so your angels are dispatched. Demonic forces are rebuked. You're showing your spiritual authority by your using your word uh, I, I learned this I learned this I, I, we was talking last night me and my brother Will Parker Jr. and Isaiah Malone we was on the phone uh, to, to real life I mean, we was on the phone chopping it up and uh, and one of the things I told them I said a king does not rule by what he does <laughs> a king rules by what he says think about this if a king wants something built, he don't go out and build it. 
He decrees and he declares. He speaks. He says it and it is so. It was so powerful and we even see this in the story of Daniel. Whatever a king declared, it could not be reversed. And so when, when, when they came hating on Daniel, if you don't know the story, Daniel was praying and, 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 and some haters uh, got into the king's ear and said, hey, let's make a decree, can't nobody pray. And so they made this decree uh, that can't nobody pray. And Daniel says, hey, I, I, I do what I do. He opened up his window and he prayed like he normally do. So the haters told on him. And so the, 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 the penalty uh, for, for somebody praying was they was thrown into the lion's den. And so, so they threw uh, Daniel into the lion's den and God showed up supernaturally. <laughs> and God showed up supernaturally in the life uh, of Daniel. He closed the mouths of the and Daniel slept good. And so the king came back the next morning and, and, and said, David, I mean, Daniel, Daniel, uh, did, did your God deliver? He said, I'm all right, king. They end up pulling him out when they threw the haters on in there. And so what I'm trying to get you to see, your confession has power. When you understand, uh, when you understand your confession, when you understand that when you speak, because the, the king's, uh, what he confessed could not be reversed. It couldn't be reversed. And so you as a priesthood, you are a royal priesthood. And so when you want something, you have out of a believing heart, you confess, you speak. Oh my goodness. And it is so. And so let's, let's dive in this real fast to formulate confession. Number one, make it a, a, a first person statement. Make it personal. I thank you. I believe. I confess your word. You have to make it first person statement. You can't be talking about somebody else. Now, now, now faith confessions must be personal. It must be for you. You can't make faith statements. Now you can intercede and pray for other people, but you can't make faith statements for somebody else because just like uh, your word has more authority in your life than God's word until you come into agreement, then his power backs you. Their words in their life have more authority and more power in their lives than your word. You can't, okay, here's a prime example. A person is sick. They believe to go home for Jesus. They telling everybody, I'm ready to go home. And then you walk in the room talking about, by, your, by Jesus stripes, you are healed. I speak healing. God ain't honoring you on that one because it's not your life. He didn't say life and death is in the power uh, of somebody else's tongue. He said life and death is in the power of your tongue. And just like it's in your tongue for your life, it's in their tongue for their life. So it has to be personal. Then number two, you have to make it present tense. Faith is now. You have to make it. Pre I'm going to leave this up. You have to make it present tense. Faith is now. Uh, faith is not future. You can't keep it futuristic. Now faith. Because what most people make the mistake of, oh my goodness, uh, I'm believing for a house two years from now. <laughs> and then they get the two years now, I'm believing for a house a year from now. They always keep it futuristic. No, you say, I, I believe I receive, I have my house now. I, I see it. And, and you start meditating. You start using meditation. You start seeing yourself. You start seeing yourself in your five-bedroom house. You start seeing yourself in your three levels and your three-car garage and your master suite and, and, your, and your hangout area in your master suite and your his and hers walk-in closet and your his and hers sink and your jacuzzi tub and your shower. And you start seeing an open space for a living room where you can have uh, all your family there at the one time after the virus is over you see you see yourself oh i i, I, I didn't get into myself but but you got to see yourself and you got to enjoy it's what you got to make it present tense so when we formulate the faith confession it got to be present tense number uh three uh it must agree with the word since faith is based on the word the confession must be in agreement with the word and so this is important you go and you you just literally you go and grab your bible you go and grab. You believe it for debt camps cancellation. You go to Romans uh, thirteen and eight. You pull up Romans thirteen. And you say, okay, what does Roman? What the word says? It says, oh no man anything but to love them, uh, uh, love one another. For he that loveth one another hath fulfilled the law. Okay, so I'm believing that. So now I take. I owe no man anything but love. I owe. You see how I made it personal? I didn't just say. I didn't just say. Uh, 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 
30, it says, oh, no, man. I didn't just say, oh, no, man, anything but the love of him. But I made it personal. I owe no man anything but the love of him. I owe no it man in oh owe, owe no man anything but the lover. You you read this by his stripes, you are healed. You say by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Every stripe that he took provided healing for me. So I, I don't have I'm healed from cancer. I'm healed from thyroids. I'm healed of, from, from breast cancer. I'm healed. I'm healed. You make it present, you make it personal, you make it present tense, and you're speaking the word. You're giving voice to the word. And then don't outthink yourself. Make it simple. Make it simple. Don't don't make this thing difficult. Some of you and, and you see other confessions and you're trying to be like them. Hey, people have done this for years. The people have done it for years. You trying to come up with the one I just read, Psalms 35 and 20, uh, and all this. God delights in the prosperity of his servant. So therefore, servant, I declare that I'm out of debt. My needs are met. Watch that's that's simple. That's simple. I'm literally repeating what the promise that that word gave me. That when I say Psalms 35 to God delights in the prosperity of his servant. So now that's the scripture. So as his servant, I declare that I'm out of debt. My needs are met. I have plenty more to put in store. I've made it personal. I, I made it a uh, present tense. I'm not saying I'm going to be a debt. I am. I am. It's happening right now. And I begin to operate and to move as such. And so this is so, so, so important. If you're going to make a faith confession, you have to do uh, these, these, these simple things. And so, and so as we, oh, sorry. As we as we wrap up, remember remember we talked about bad boys. So watch this. He's making a confession. He's actually making a faith confession. He's making a faith confession. He's saying you have. A, they ain't caught the God. They not even. They're in, literally in a different car. You don't even see the car they chasing even in in the in the viewpoint. But watch this. He's confessing. He's making a confession of his faith. <laughs> he said. He said you have a right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. You have a right to eternity. And Will Smith, but what are you doing? I'm getting it out the way. Because in his mind, the enemy is already caught. In his mind, the bad guy is already arrested. He's already apprehended. And this is what our faith confession does. It does just like they did in Bad Boys. It literally puts us out there where we're operating as if it is already so. It is already done. And when you make your faith confessions, you are literally saying you're making it personal. You're making it present and you're making it simple and you're making it out of the promises of God. And so therefore it is so just like when God speaks, he declares it and it is done. When you come into agreement with God because you've been created in the image and the likeness and you're the reflection of God, when you speak it is so. I don't care how impossible it is. All things are possible to him that believeth. All things are possible to him that speaks out of a believing heart. And so we have to understand it is vital and it is important that we make sure we're saying the right things. So when we say what that mouth do, what is your faith confession? What are you saying out of what words are coming out of your mouth. And so the first thing you, we want you to make sure you're doing is that you're confessing Jesus as Lord. It is so important. It is so vital that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Don't miss this moment because the truth of the matter is you can confess the word, but until you get a relationship with Jesus, it will not benefit you to his full capacity. And so I'm going to pray. And after I pray, if you don't have a relationship, with Jesus Christ, I want you to go ahead and text eight Jesus to 816-670-3684. I want you to text Jesus to 816-670-3684 because you need Jesus in your life. You want Jesus in your life. If you want these benefits that we're talking about, if you want this personal relationship we have with our Lord and Savior, it is important that you make sure you have a relationship 
relationship with Jesus Christ. And, and you and you may be someone who, who who's not a member of a live church. And the truth of the matter is, I encourage you to get connected to a live church. If you don't have a church home, if you don't have a place you can call home, and, and, and the truth of the matter is, there are some people on here who you haven't been to a church even before the pandemic for years. And you still saying you a member of a certain church. No, you're not. If you ain't been in there years, if you haven't given anything, if you haven't served, you're not a member of that church. You need to be connected to a ministry where you can be active and you can be a part and you can and you can get fed the word of God on a consistent basis. And, and, and I desire, I, I believe that, that I'm the person that God is calling to impact your life. The truth of the matter is as your pastor, I can teach you how to live by faith. And when you use your faith, you will overcome every obstacle, every challenge, every condition, every situation in your life. My commitment to you as your pastor is threefold. I promise that you will be encouraged, educated, and energized to come alive in Christ by faith. Encouraged because you need to be encouraged. The Bible says, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Your head has been down because you've been beaten up by life and you need to be encouraged. You need to be uh, inspired. Be, and the Bible says when you do that, the king of glory shall come in. You need to be educated because once your head is lifted, you need something to be filled in that. You, you need some knowledge so that you can begin to look at your present and your future from a different perspective. Then you need to be energized uh, because you need to start moving towards your destiny and, and that will be attained through you coming alive in Christ by faith. So as your pro as your pastor, this is my promise to you that I will encourage, uh, uh, enter educate and energize you to come alive in Christ by faith. So now the decision as your pastor, this is my promise and, and the decision is yours. Some of you have watched us on Facebook and on YouTube and seen the ads and you decided this is a church that you need to be connected to. You need to be connected to. Uh, some of you have been watching us from afar off and you've not made membership commitment. And today is that day. So text the word family to 816-670-3684. Some of you have been dead. You have just been existing. But a key to your turnaround is being in the right place. You cannot be the best you in the wrong place. It's time to turn your dead situations and start coming alive in Christ by faith. And so this is your opportunity. This is your chance because the truth of the matter is it will not impact you until you make this decision. So text Jesus for salvation at 816-670-3684. Text a family for membership to 816-670-3684 because this is so important. So I'm going to pray, and I want you to make this decision. Father God, we pray for each and every person who's, who's, who's rededicating their lives, who's coming to you for the first time. We're praying for that person who's joining a live church as we speak a God, we pray that you remove any hindrance or any delays from their lives, oh God. We pray that they will hear your spirit and they will obey your spirit right now in the name of Jesus. So move right now because the truth of the matter is you're even saying, now nah, I don't need to do it right now. Let me ask you this last question. What, what's your mouth confess? What's what you with your mouth confessing? Is it hurting or healing you right now? Oh my! As you're making this decision, is what you're saying hurting you or healing you? Are you talking yourself out of making the decision uh, to to text uh, Jesus? Are you are you talking yourself out of the decision to becoming a member of a live church? Either right now, what you're saying and thinking, it's either hurting you, it's either choking the life out of you, or it's embracing you and bringing healing to you. You cannot be the best you not in relationship with Jesus. You cannot be the best you without being where 
where God has called you to be. And there's some of you on this line watching us right now on Facebook and YouTube and on our website who know you're supposed to be a member of a live church, but you're refusing to do it for whatever reason. And so my question to you, what you, what your mouth is saying, what you're confessing, what you're believing, is it hurting you or healing you? And let me go even further. Are you going to continue? If it's hurting you, are you going to continue to allow it to hurt you? Are you going to make the right decision today? Are you going to make the right decision today to confess Jesus as Lord and Savior? To confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior? To go ahead and text uh, 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 Jesus to 816-670-3684. To text membership to 816-670-3684. This is so important. Your life is on the line. Why are you uh, uh, bewildered? Why are you you stand because people's lives are at stake and when we ex accept Jesus and we when we extend Jesus we can't be half-hearted and so I need you to make this decision right now God wants you to make this decision right now and I want you to keep looking at it. the decision you making right now to not accept Jesus to not become a member is it hurting you or healing you right now I'm going to let that sit there because I want you to think about this. I, I want you to, to go ahead and instead of hurting yourself, begin to heal yourself by following what God is speaking into your spirit. And he's speaking into your life to come into a relationship with Jesus. He's speaking into your life to become a member where, of a live church where you can be around a community of people who, who, will, who, will, who will encourage you, who will educate you, who will energize you to come alive in Christ by faith. And and this isn't just about you joining a live church. This is about you getting in the right place at the right time to make an impact in your life. And so when you get in your right place, stop allowing your words to hurt you. Stop allowing your decisions to hurt you and start getting to the point where you can become, where you can get healed. And so, so I encourage you, I encourage you to go ahead and, and, and make and text uh, uh, eight Jesus and our text family right now. There should be some people texting right now. There should be some people texting right now. There should be some people texting right now. Hallelujah. And so we're praying for you. We're grateful for what God is doing. We thank each and every one of you uh, for participating and joining in with us. We pray, was, was this a blessing to you? Was this a, in, in the comment section? Let me know. Was this a blessing to you? Was, was, this, was this beneficial to you? Did this help, help, you, help you at all? Because we want you to make sure that we're being a blessing to you. And so if you're getting on here late and didn't have, didn't have an opportunity to get Give. we're going to leave off with a little worship and we're going to leave off with and you can go ahead and give uh, uh as we leave and so we let's pray oh precious father we thank you. We bless your holy name. We pray supernatural favor upon your people. We pray your anointing upon your people. We pray your power. We pray your face shines upon them. We pray your grace upon them. We pray they receive your blessing. And oh God, as they begin to speak and declare according to your word, let manifestation happen. We thank you. You put your word. Your word shall not return to you void. Just like their words will not return to them void. And it's an awesome, wonderful name of Jesus. We pray. Amen. So if you didn't get an opportunity to give, these are the different ways to give. So God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Let's worship a little bit. God knows the plans he has for me. He knows the thoughts he thinks for me. And nothing is an accident. I'm alive because there's more. We we'll say that again. God knows the plans He has for me. He knows the thoughts He thinks for me. And nothing is an accident. I'm alive because there's more. Else. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. Thing is, and that's it.
confident I'm alive because there's more. Say it again. Say, I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. And nothing is an accident. I'm alive because there's no say I'm alive. I'm alive because there's no say I'm alive. 